Hey, you finally made it. It's the Justin Savaya Show. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. Um, before we begin, I just want to say a quick word from our Lord Jesus Christ. No, I'm just joking. Um, this episode is, uh, I get to speak with Elliot Hulse. Uh, he is a uh, motivator, inspirator, strength coach to millions of young men and women, um, including myself. And we go over uh, a few different things, a few different topics to get his inside views on, on them. Uh, this is definitely going to bring value to, to those of you who follow him and for those even for those who don't. Um, there is definitely some things in here that people have not heard uh, heard before uh, and so definitely listen to this podcast till the end and also if you enjoy it um, you know consider subscribing to the show and leaving you know leaving your feedback uh, if you enjoy it you can go on to Apple Podcasts or wherever you're listening to it and leave a review give me feedback tell me what you like and don't like leave a five-star review, and share this with your friends, at least one other person. Uh, you know, they may find some value in it. So I hope you enjoy. And now I want to stop and talk about something that's very near and dear to my heart, podcasting. Have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? Well, when I was trying to get my podcast off the ground, I had a lot of questions. How do I record an episode? How do I get my show into all the apps people like to listen to? How do I make money from my podcast? The answer to every one of these questions is really simple. Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. And best of all, it's 100% free and ridiculously easy to use. And now, Anchor can match you with great sponsors who want to advertise on your podcast. That means you can get paid to podcast right away. In fact, that's what I'm doing right now by reading this ad. So if you've always wanted to start a podcast and make money doing it, Go to anchor.fm slash start. That's anchor.fm slash start. Thank you so much, Ellie, for for joining the podcast. And for people who don't know your story, can you give a a backstory of, of who you are and what you do? Well, I'm a strength coach by profession. I grew up in Long Island, and my parents are from Belize, and my uncle lived with us, and he taught me how to lift when I was a kid, how to train, me and my brother in the basement doing and stuff. So I took the exercise very early in life, played college football, then won a scholarship, uh, studied exercise science, uh, started sh- camp years later which is uh, my company where we train. Started out athletes out of the back of my hand in parks and uh, slowly evolved into our 8,000 square foot gym now where people. Uh, during the course of, during that course, I became a professional, a famous, um, I started using YouTube to make my strong man training videos. So, uh, kind of, what my members were doing at the gym, <clears throat> and little did I know that YouTube was going to be my videos worldwide. You probably know me worldwide is from, from the YouTube videos. Yeah, absolutely. I, and that's how that's how I got to 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 see you um, at the beginning as well. You were one of, if not the maybe the number one. Uh, person uh, who actually got me so passionate about um about working out and, and fitness and of your hundreds and hundreds and thousands of videos i remember watching your videos religiously looking forward to a new one every day um, because of, of how inspiring it was and it, it amazed me the Every day you would come out with with new ideas, thought provoking ideas, and it, it just amazed me. Um, and it, it made me 
made me very, very inspired and 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 very pumped to to be exercising and you know to also be to be learning and and seeking new information. Yeah, man. And I mean, you you've inspired millions of people and continue to inspire millions of people. How does that feel? Well, I didn't know how it felt because I had no idea what was going on when I was making the videos in the beginning. You know, people are just online. People are just numbers on a screen. It's just uh, comments and icons. So I really didn't know anything about it. I didn't grow up in L.A. or have famous parents or like these people who set out to be famous YouTubers. It's funny because there was no such thing when I was making YouTube videos. But now people like go out with the intention like they want to become famous. So I'm sure the experience is a little different for them because you know they're reaching for a goal. For me, it kind of hit it kind of hit me from the from blind side. I didn't really know what was going on until I started venturing outside of my sleepy little city here in Florida, mm-hmm. and people would recognize me in the streets and like New York City. And I was even in like Tennessee. I was in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and like young men were coming up to me in the restaurants and stuff. So that's when I that's when it it hit me. I was like, oh, shit, I may be famous. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I like again, I the, the videos like and one in particular because of years of like because when I was a, a really um, important kind of period, I was working in um, Alberta at the time um, in the oil fields and whatnot. Um, and I was in, you know, the camps, right? You, you, the guys, you know, the, the, the men and women, they get, you know, sent to, to various camps around and we would stay at hotels, um, you know, also, uh, depending on which job we were at. Um, and, you know, all we had was, was work and then after work and just working out. Right. And, and then mm-hmm. these videos that, you know, I, I would just have my phone and then I'd watch these videos and, you know, it's 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 kind of um, like like you said, you do you don't really know the impact you had on on people until they kind of started coming up to you. But um, you know, I think that you breathe a lot of um, you breathe a lot of information that a lot of people are are very much unaware of, right? Yeah. You know what I mean, and 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 so it's mm-hmm. it's such a like a, it it's 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 such an important it's such an important thing, like, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I realized what I was doing. I mean, I read a lot, and I have a lot of interests, so I always find a way to blend my expansive repertoire of ideas uh, with very practical things like strength training. So that's why a lot of people took to it. Mm-hmm. For sure, and and you know, one one uh, there's so many videos and and uh, you know things that you talk have talked about. Um, but one one in particular that I just thought of is is one about um, you say don't concentrate on the finger, right? And mm-hmm. uh, you know that I think that that's that's super important. And um, and an, an another one as well is. Um, is is don't idolize me yeah right and and because you will um because when you come when you come and meet me then you know i i'm going to disappoint you (laughs) because because i'm gonna change right right um it just it 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 just makes me laugh um you you have you, you make such amazing videos man and uh like it's it's so it's so awesome um that you that you've done what you've done and that you continue to to do what you do and i know that you've gone through uh some phases um you know you're the you're the warrior the magician the king um so what phase are you at right now i am back in my king you're back in your king. i'm back in my in that sense of sovereignty that it doesn't matter what anyone says or the, where the world is going or uh, how people react or respond to me. I must be, I must 
allow myself to be in all my authenticity. And so for a while there, I had to, I had to, I had to, I had to, I had to kind of reevaluate that. I wasn't sure where I was at, who I was. And I, and during that time, it was easy for people to manipulate me, you know, uh, with their opinions. Mm-hmm. But, um, these past 12 months has, uh, <laughs> has allowed me to, uh, to reestablish that foundation so that I can't be knocked off right. uh, any longer. And so that's what King, being the king. So with each of the four archetypes, you're talking about a different way of being that's inherent in all of us. They're all there. King, warrior, magician, lover go uh, like this in terms of how to be. So king is about, well, let me start with warrior. Warrior is about doing. When you're actively doing, pursuing, achieving, you're, you're in your warrior. When you're thinking, either physically thinking or metaphysically thinking, you know, it's not very tangible, but you're, you're, you're spinning wheels, you're spinning the gears, you're in your, your magician. When, uh, when you're feeling, you're in your lover, be it the good feelings or the bad feelings, it's all lover, it's all the heart. But King is the, is, is, you know, the part of the reason why it's at the top of the cross and why it's revered so much is because the king is about being and being is not doing being is not thinking being is not feeling being is allowing and getting out of the way and in many ways like you know you brought up the fact that i mentioned not looking at the finger look at where the finger is pointing and not to idolize me well what our ancestors understood in terms of a person's genius or a person's uh, daemon, they would call it, is that it was disidentified with the personality. And they would, they would say things like, that's the way God's working through that person. Look how God is expressing himself. Or look at how the genius, the person wasn't considered a genius. It was the genius, the, the existential, the, the God genius working through that individual. So the person actually gets out of the way. That person's not doing anything. That person's not like almost when someone's in the zone, like a basketball player who's been training and training and training for years, Mm -hmm. all of a sudden one day he's in the zone. That means he's not doing anything. God's moving through him. He's almost uh, carried by grace. Mm -hmm. You see a lot of musicians do this. A lot of speakers you'll notice this in where they basically are, they're not they can't take credit they literally can't take credit because they're not doing anything they're getting out of the way and being and so that's what the king is the king opens up the gates for divine power to be poured down into the planet the king doesn't create order but where the king stands order order ensues order just follows the king Mm -hmm. and and you know, you've you've done this internet stuff for for I mean, so many years. What what ke- what kept you, you know, on target and being like and, and realizing okay, this is like this is what I'm supposed to do. Like, how did you, how did you, what what inside you like was confirming that this was the right thing to do? So again, it it wasn't even like me doing it. It just kind of happened. Mm-hmm. So it, the where you're talking in terms of being and the king, the path is revealed. This is really what we all want. We want to know what our path is, what our mission is, what our purpose is. But we look outside of ourselves and we try to attach it to doing, some sort of doing or some sort of feeling or some sort of thinking, either that inside, internally or out, outside. But life and God is, re- is revealed to us. It happens through revelation. And so I didn't, I didn't set out to be a famous YouTuber. I didn't even know what the hell that was as a kid growing up. I didn't make a plan. I didn't have good feelings about it because I saw somebody else doing it. Mm-hmm. There, I had nothing. It was nothing. It was, it was absolutely nothing. I made my first YouTube videos just because it was there. And someone said, hey, you know, you can put your videos on this, on this website. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, that'd be cool. My, and so my members can watch, my, my gym guys can watch what they did today and show their friends. So I didn't, and then, you know, there, there are all the constituents of that, like working with men, working with athletes, um, so many aspects of my life that I cannot take credit for. I cannot say, oh, I planned this and I made it happen. 
they were just kind of revealed to me. I think it was it's just a part of how God is expressing himself through me on this planet. He wanted the, Elliot Hulse consciousness to be delivered. Mm -hmm. And so I honor myself in that. I respect myself in that now a lot more than I had in years past. Uh, my foundation in that is stable and I and I re I'm conscious now. I realize, oh, this is what's happening. God's speaking through me in order to deliver. And it doesn't mean I'm right. I'm not trying to deliver right information, mm -hmm. but to deliver my being, to deliver my consciousness mm -hmm. to the planet. Well, it's clearly had um, a huge impact. Um, you know, so what are what are some of the most meaningful experiences that you've that you've had through this whole journey so far? Well, there have been so many. Like I mentioned, you know, being in Gatlinburg, Tennessee and having like, I think that we had at least four or five young men came up to me. And so um, that was that was pretty shocking and eye opening. When I hit a million subscribers, that was huge. When I went to Europe and I had 500, 500 Brits come and do dynamic meditation with me on a Sunday morning, uh, you know, being able to travel the world and, and put on workshops and being able to be a entrepreneur in this digital age where, you know, we literally make money through bits, We're not doing anything. We don't have, none of this even exists. It's all in the cloud, right? Like we're having this conversation. It's just a freaking app and it's waves yeah. that's, uh, that are being sent up from these, these devices up into clouds. Like, mm -hmm. so it's I'm just in awe. Yeah. yeah, that's amazing. I would say the whole thing has just been. I didn't have the internet when I was a kid. There was I didn't have an email address until college, so I'm just I'm still in awe at this the, the entire thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and where it's going. I mean, I've I've been listening to a number of conversations on uh, on a number of topics on where where things are going, and that's a that's another that's another topic that I, I would be super interested in in hearing uh, hearing what you have to say about that. But um, yeah, I mean. It's. I mean, I stand in awe of of kind of what what you have done, um, and um, you know, like, it, and it's not just it's not just me. It's like word of mouth, right? It's one person watches and listens and gets gets expired inspired, and then they tell mm -hmm. their friends, and then their friends are watching, and then it's just a network compound effect, you know, and and. And, and your your followers grow and your you know your your uh, impact grows and uh, you know everyone you know you, you take a little bit of time and then you see everyone's breathing breathing into their balls you know the next thing you know <laughs> right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right so yeah. um, and I, okay so one of the things I know that you're 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 kind of on right now um, is uh, is it, well it's been been for a while but but molding molding young men and the masculinity issue um you know uh maybe some people are trying to kind of tampen that down what are your what are your thoughts about about that uh what my thoughts about the state of masculinity the state of state of masculinity the state of the state of sort of the the conversation going on of everyone being so sensitive, um, kind of the Me Too movement, you know, everyone's a victim. Well, if you think that people are just taking cues from their own intellect, their own intuition, and their own soul, you'd be mistaken. Most people are, are highly influenced, or I would even say that 90% influenced by what they're seeing in the media, what they be, what they're being taught in universities, and what their family and friends have been brainwashed to believe, and I think the whole veneer, it, as it probably has been since the 1960s, has been to divide and conquer. So the more that we can play separation and um, victim politics, the the more enraged people get, and the more extremists they are in their viewpoints and in their and their actions. And I don't think I don't I don't think any of this is by accident. Mm -hmm. I think that there are forces at play that want to see us. They want to see the family destroyed. They want to see men weak, and they know that when men are weak, women are unstable. 
there's there's never been ever a a woman majority ruled successful society mm-hmm. i mean it's just not it hadn't been recorded um but this is what they're this is what they're hoping i think it's by pitting the sexes against one another making women feel over empowered to to a pathological pathological degree mm-hmm. where you know the the power that women actually have are not is not being honored um people are having less children uh and men and women are competing with men in the workplace and in at the home and it's been pretty easy because men have been completely feminized and turned weak both through the physiological physiologically through the, the the pesticides the herbicides and the plastics and the foods that we know have estrogens and xenoestrogens and phytoestrogens that that weaken us uh and then the the systematic dumbing down of the american male through the media you know uh most male role models or uh, or fathers in shows and movies are usually big dumb homer simpson types right and so we've been we've been dumbed down chemically and we've been uh dumbed down socially so that there's a flip flop going on where women are 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 trying to be men and men are being turned into women mm-hmm. and it's causing havoc uh men are confused and so are women no one's happy and if you ask you know those who are the victim in this which is of course the women uh, they all they they have to be the victim in this drama because men have more power men are the stronger sex it's just the way it is we we're born that way it's natural mm-hmm. um what am I saying? Uh, they, it'd be very hard for them to acknowledge that it's been a hoax. It's been a trick. Giving women complete and unfettered uh, responsibility over the childbirthing process through birth control and abortion. Um, the divorce laws that make it easy for women. And it's note that you know something like 80% of all divorces are started by women. There are all, all these... All these quote unquote empowerment tactics have been designed in order to flip the scale, turn turn the world upside down. And the first shall be last and the last shall be first in the in the in the in the last days, as it's predicted in the Bible. And we're we're there. All kinds of weird corruption is going forth where if you're gonna destroy people, you destroy their sex. That's the because that's where all our power comes from. So you destroy the family. And then you destroy the children, and you do that by telling the children that there's no such thing as gender, and that they don't need a father, and that they, um, you know, they, that that's 57 different genders. So there's all kinds of weird, uh, how would you say, like um, perversions mm-hmm. in our in our approach to life. Like you don't have to look very far. You don't have to be. You don't have to be a Bible thumper or a scientist to just look out in nature and see how far we've strayed from God's path, from the natural path. And so to say that there's 57 different genders is like you've got to be schizoid. You've got to be completely out of your mind to even like consider a conversation like that. Yeah. But that's where we are. <laughs> that's like that would be so confusing. I mean, if I were growing up as a, as a kid and I was told that. Like for instance, if I could, if if I was told I got to pick my gender, um, I can't even imagine really how that would feel. Um, yeah, it's very right. odd to think that some people are really pushing that idea. Um, and maybe yeah, not it's know- evil. Go go ahead. I was just saying, it's pure evil. It's pure pure evil. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's. Uh, but it's it's an it's it's like people need to stand like stand up against um against this sort of thing you know what that made me think um what if it's the people that kind of are in positions of power that are maybe not as masculine like the men who are in power who are maybe not as strong and as masculine and they want to they want to bring down those those more you know manly just like go and attack and get it done and they want to take that away yeah of course right society is set up 
And strong men have allowed this to happen because strong men are good men. They've allowed it to happen where the weak garner power. And so we've set it up in a way that the weak garner enough power to topple over the strong. Mm -hmm. And when you've got the weak in charge, you've got you've got a weak world. So, I mean, you just look at and you, 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 you know, I'm going to bring this up politics, but you'll see how how triggered people are when you bring up these types of things. Mm -hmm. And it just shows how weak and emotional they are. Mm -hmm. But if you look rationally at America during the Obama administration, we were at we were weak. We were much more weaker economically. We were weak as uh, we were uh, re the lack of respect internationally. We were a weak country because we had a weak man in charge. And we we kind of wanted that because he represents the victim class. You know, he's black. So, you know, v victims want to want to want to up uphold the victim class by putting weak leaders in charge and so what you, you're seeing now is a complete reversal you're seeing like the pendulum swing back the other way and that's why i have hope for america that with a donald trump in office who is who is as alpha male as you can get as an american man i mean look at his his life what he's done and just his behavior the way he acts mm -hmm. they can't a, a good alpha male will not get emotional or or pushed off his his stance. Right. No matter how hard they try, he's unfazed. He doesn't care mm -hmm. because he believes and he's strong and he and uh, and he's a real man. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. Obama was a woman. Yeah, I, I I can definitely see where you're coming from with that, and I agree with that uh, for sure. I, d I definitely think that the leaders need to be like very strong-willed and mm. and know where they're going have a direction because then that that means that other people can follow that direction yeah with conviction mm. yeah so so yeah that brings me on to leadership um you, something that you have experienced a ton of i mean you're a father um you know you first and foremost and then you also lead all these other people um what's your experience being being at a position where you're at being 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 the leader you are well i've had to learn how to how to cultivate and be a leader i was the oldest of four kids mostly boys i was usually the strongest and the fastest um i was captain of the football team i mean like being a leader is in my blood it's in my nature it's what i came here to be but i also had to confront I had to confront my inner beta to be able to to lead like an alpha. And my inner beta it has been a byproduct of the conditioning of the world where you've got to be a, a good boy all the time. You got to do the right thing to get along. It's more about getting along, which is a very female quality than actually leading. Mm -hmm. So we've been, you know, we've been given this these directives since the time we were in school to play nice and to get along. Well, that doesn't get anything done. A good leader is not about getting along and playing nice. Donald Trump doesn't get along and play nice, but he gets shit done. Mm -hmm. And so I really had to, before I could really stand in my in my feet, in my shoes, as a good, strong leader, which is something that's just only starting to emerge very recently. I, I, I had to really confront some inner demons. I had, to get a, I had to get away from this idea that I need to be liked. I need people to to, to like me, and I need to get along. And that's not actually the truth. The truth is you've got to have conviction and allow yourself to be led by the Lord. And whatever God is speaking through me, I have to just get out the way. And even if it means the, the world crucifies me, then that's the way I'm going to lead. I mean, look at Jesus. What You would think that, like, what a weak leader. Like, he just let everybody kill him. Like, he just put him up on a, on a cross. What kind of leader is that? But if you consider his conviction, he's willing enough to lead to lead to the death like okay cool you don't believe me or you don't want to follow me or you don't i'm gonna even just let you kill me I mean, that's a, that's a tremendous amount of conviction that most people like we don't even like to get bad comments on youtube videos it's like fuck that think about somebody who's willing to be taken out their life taken away for their convictions that's the kind of alpha male leadership that uh men need to and are developing right right yeah they, like especially the in the in the outside world and in the workplace right like school is one school is one thing and then you get out into the real world and 
you have to you have to fight for your position yeah right you have to fight to to move forward yep right um and so you know that so and and, and there's there's so much conversation and like you said earlier you know everything is is in the cloud now and so much of our world is is being effective if affected and for instance artificial intelligence um and you know automation you know um that's that's um you know expected to take you know to take more jobs and and this and that um and that brings me to um one thing i wanted to ask you about is um this idea of universal basic income um, have you have you looked into that or given any thoughts to to that? I've heard of it. I I know what it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this uh, idea, I don't agree, I don't agree with it. You, I you, mean, we've seen time, and no, I don't. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't take much. You don't have to look too far into into the past. You don't have to look too far into history to see where socialism does not work. In fact, I was just listening to the law, the laws of human nature by Robert Greene. And he talks about the, um, the the cultural revolution, Mao Zedong in China, and and how they were trying to create social socialism in this particular way, and the whole country began. It didn't work. The whole the way they tried to uh, to do it, the whole country was in ruin. Nobody was motivated to do anything. All arts and technology and creativity begins to cease because I'm getting the same universal pay as the potato picker. So all human ambition and intuition and capacity to create and motivation to do anything becomes uh, becomes diminished. And we're kind of – we're not too far off from that if you look at the amount of people on welfare in America. There are amount of people that – like they don't have to do anything. They don't have to think. All they're going to do is wake up, turn on the TV, and wait for their check on the 1st and the 15th. That creates useless people. The planet doesn't need any more useless people. Right, right. And and what about this idea, though, that that's proposed of say a thousand dollars a month, um, and then you say that nothing gets done. That's one idea that nothing, you know, nothing is produced. There's no drive. But what if those people that are still say artistic and you know have business you know ventures that they want to do, entrepreneurs, they can just get added on to that. They can do that, but the people who are are gonna just consume, right? So these people that say don't really have the ability to put money into the market will now have that ability with this basic, you know, with this universal basic income. Well, where's the money gonna come from? Well, I mean, this is something that I um, I need to do more research on myself, but this is just something proposed, um, and it's, um, you know, it, for, either from the the future or or someone's someone's paying for it, right? So, yeah, I, I don't jive with it. I don't think it's a great idea. I think that there are way, t- and so I'm a bad guy by saying this. This is actually one of my dad's terms. Uh, But I believe it, that there are useless people. There are people that are just dead weight on this planet, that they don't need to be here because they contribute nothing, Mm -hmm. absolutely nothing. So all this is going to do is create a larger, more uh, more angry because, you you know, if you don't give them their their, uh, welfare checks, these people. That's how like the the, when there will be blood in the streets is when the government runs out of money and they can't hand out welfare checks. Mm -hmm. But you're going to have a larger welfare class in my opinion Mm -hmm. yeah and that's and i like capitalism Mm -hmm. i like competition that what you're describing is the is the way of the female Mm -hmm. the the circle the getting along the 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 egalitarianism very feminine and it usually destroys societies capitalism is very masculine it's very goal oriented it's very uh warrior driven it's about sovereignty entrepreneurship these are masculine virtues. I this is the way I thought about it when I became an entrepreneur. I, and you know, I didn't I had no idea that I was going to be YouTube famous. I was just a trainer. I would have rather lived in my van. I literally had this plan. I was like I'm going to I'm going to live in my van. 
than lean on the government for, uh, you know, or, or do anything that was against my sovereignty. Because I was going to make it or I was just going to, I was going to eat dog food and live in my van. Most people who ha don't have an ounce of the, the courage and the conviction that I have to be able to, to lift their life up would balk against the idea of living in their van. They think they're entitled to air conditioning. I'm entitled to a cell phone because I live here, because I'm alive, because I'm breathing, eating, and shitting that I, sh that I deserve a place to live. That's yeah. not necessarily the case, and right. I don't think that's true. Right, right. Okay, so, so yeah, the, I, I think this topic is kind of, um, it's come into um, the forefront um, because of this whole automation thing, right? This, this idea that if millions of people are going to be out of jobs, what are those millions of people going to do, right? Like, have you heard the um, learn to code um, kind of movement? <laughs> meme <laughs> yeah yeah exactly mm -hmm. so that's the, yeah that's the that's the concern right what are those what are those people going to do when their jobs are gone well th they're gonna have to go back to being men with real jobs right now most of our jobs are like literally in the clouds like you said learn to code mm -hmm. it's all this existential non-material up in the clouds bullshit they're not even real jobs most of the jobs most people, men have these days, because we've been hoaxed into going to universities to get expensive degrees, to get these uh, hoity-toity, white collar, sit on your ass behind a computer jobs. You're right, they should be automated and outsourced and done with. They, they, because as you're alluding to, technology can do most of that bullshit. But you know what won't ever go away? Plumbers, electricians, contractors, men who build things, mm -hmm. men who do work with their hands, craftsmen, all these things are the jobs that our parents told us we didn't want, that we shouldn't have. Mm -hmm. And uh, many of them got shipped overseas to countries with people who, not, not necessarily a plumber, but like factory jobs right. for people, for people who were humble enough and not brainwashed by the, the, the education industrial complex mm -hmm. to get these to get you know fifty thousand dollars in debt for a bullshit degree for a job that will that will either not exist never exist or go up in clouds with technology right so men will have to be forced back to the land mm -hmm. we'll be forced back to farming our own land learning a trade men should learn a trade mm -hmm. that's what men do mm -hmm. it's kind of we ironic do stuff yeah, it's ironic because, you know, they're the you know, people are learning how to improve everything and then like you said it brings us back to uh, you know, be, if everything's going to be done for us, then then we're not going to have anything to do. <laughs> mhm. Mm yeah, so I mean it's a super interesting time um and like this is this is things that I I listen to um I listen to daily and exactly why i started this podcast is to is to talk with 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 interesting uh people like yourself and and um and you know to to chat about these these things yeah man right and and um i think it's super cool um you know that all this that all this is going on and it's it's quite amazing how how powerful these social media platforms are youtube twitter Instagram, Facebook, and this is these are global, global apps. Like, I'm talking to you from Vancouver, BC, and you're, you know, wherever you are in the states. You know, it's it's amazing. And um, and another thing that brings me to um, is is deplatforming um, people who do not necessarily agree with the ideology of these platforms. Um, have you heard of, of any of these instances? Well, yeah, it's censorship. I mean, these kinds of things have been happening since the Library of Alexandria was burned. You know, it's you, you got to control information, you got to control people and the dissemination of the information. And the internet kind of created a, 
we're a bit spoiled because information has always been controlled. And then the internet opened up the gateway for sort of democratized information. And now it's being reined back a little bit. So, you know, it, was it a problem before? Yeah, but we didn't know. We didn't know it was a problem. And, and if you wanted to get alternative information, you would subscribe to like magazines or newspapers or even like uh, some AM radio stations. Like it was out there. You'd have to go and look for it and you'd find it if you really wanted it. But then when the internet opened the gateway and everybody had a voice, um, we realized how, how blessed we are, how amazing this is. Wow. And, you know, people are exposed to all kinds of ideas they would have never have had. Mm -hmm. And now we're in, we're at a place where they're they're building the boundaries around it. They're reining it in, and it's the same players. It's CNN, Fox News, uh, CNBC. If you search most headlines, you, it's the funniest thing because you'll you'll find that the top search results are basically what you're going to see on TV, right. and they don't have any views because nobody trusts the media anymore. Nobody trusts the mainstream media. Mm -hmm. I think recently I heard something that like um, both. This is I want to talk about two things. CNN, first of all, I think their viewership is down something like 66%, something stupid. Wow. Like they just – no one's watching CNN anymore, especially mm -hmm. after the, the whole Russian collusion lie. Right, right. People just checked out. They were like, oh, we're not doing this anymore because we know we're being manipulated. We're being lied to. So this has just been huge that uh, CNN – nobody watches CNN anymore. And then now YouTube. I just heard that Alphabet, the company that owns YouTube and Google – lost something like $70 billion in ad revenue just Whoa. this past year because of their new uh, draconian laws, their new, their new standards for what can be uh, deemed appropriate for advertising. And I know like at least half of my videos these days get demonetized mm -hmm. and it, it's causing – it's causing it's costing a lot of money, and if these people are willing to lose that amount of money, it means they're very powerful people, and they're more interested in power than in than in money. And so, you know, what are we going to do? It's their it's their technology. I once heard too that it was the Pentagon that created Google. I don't know if this is true. Mm -hmm. I watch a lot of videos of this mm -hmm. spit shit out, but it's interesting considering that the government here now. Right. It's our greatest. It's their greatest surveillance tool right now. They're rolling out a 5G grid where they can literally just hang out with us, see where we are, what we're doing, what we're thinking, what we're saying, down to the micrometer, every cell in our body, uh, through this internet network with the with the phones that we carry around. We're basically droids at this point. We're half human, half tech. You ask most people to leave home without their phone, it would be like asking them to leave home without their legs. There's nice. no way. What am I going to do? I need my phone. Like, I need my heart. <laughs> yep. For sure. That's that, – it's scary, man. And yeah, for sure. And, and the, 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 the amount of – yeah, I know the, 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 the power, the immense power that they have. Um, and like you said, the cens yeah. censor censorship that they're basically controlling – what you see, right? Their algorithms are controlling what you see, having you in your own bubble. Okay, so I have a couple rapid fire questions. Um, what's your favorite coffee and your favorite breakfast? My favorite coffee is black. Just straight up? Yeah, just black and bitter. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't like that watered down shit. I like it. I black. like it. And bitter, yeah, man. I like that. What's it? What, what do you get? What do you eat for breakfast? What's your What's your like best power, power breakfast? If you're gonna go into the gym and you're just gonna fucking crush it, what are you gonna eat? Oh well, I don't normally eat breakfast, but you know, if I'm gonna have a big meal and I'm gonna go to the gym later, I, I like ground beef and eggs. Okay. Any spices in that? Any any flavoring? What's what's just straight up? Sea salt is good enough for me. Mm -hmm. I like it simple, simple and not uh, not too complicated. Yeah, man. Right on. Um, okay, what app do you use most on your phone? 
probably my, uh, it's a toss up between Instagram and my calendar app. Okay. What do you usually do uh, on Instagram? Uh, if, uh, if I'm not posting something, because most of my guys usually, most I usually have my post automated. Mm-hmm. Uh, I usually am just scrolling, scrolling and then reposting on my story. <laughs> That's what I like to do. Right, right. It's totally, I totally use it for business, but I get a lot of entertainment out of it. So I gotta be honest, I just sit there and scroll sometimes. Right. Any, any, uh, any particular interests that you, uh, you subscribe to? Uh, there, I found a couple good pages I've been following lately. One is, uh, this guy, he writes, it's poetry, but he pulls out some really dope lines from mostly male poets. I think it's like something, I don't remember, something poetry. And then there's another one, uh, called real trad dad. And so he's like traditional father, fatherhood. And so he puts some pretty cool posts on there. That's about it. You know, mostly conservative stuff or. You know, they, I like I like religious things, esoteric, and I like looking at images, like icons, stuff like that. Right, right. Cool, man. Um, and finally, what's your favorite exercise? Uh, probably deadlift. I'm built for deadlifting. Yeah, built built to lift shit off the ground, man. <laughs> I love it. Um, okay, so. Where can people find you? What's your what's your social media handles? So at Elliot Hulse on Instagram and uh, I'm on YouTube. I got two channels, Elliot Hulse and Shrimp Camp. Well, again, I want to respect your time and you don't know uh, how how thankful I am that you you came on and yeah, again, it's a privilege to to speak with you and and hopefully I can speak with you again in the future. <laughs>